Welcome everybody to the Mark Arnstein Show. This is episode two, and I'm here with my guru, my mentor, my fitness man extraordinaire, Mr. Larry Track. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you doing today? Good, man. Thanks for having me. I like being number two because you got number one out of the way. So <laughs> It's always good not to be the rookie. It has to go through the trial and errors of doing a, their first podcast. So that's always a good thing for sure, 100%. And, you know, yeah, it's perfect. been so long since we last, we last saw each other. Right? I mean, it was like, what, uh, four hours ago? Yeah, I just finished mopping up the sweat. So uh, Yeah, oh my God. Good. That it was, was good. good Good timing. I, all I can say... I, I did a workout with Larry this morning at seven. And when I got home, I, I rode my bike there, rode my bike back. So that's about, uh, I don't know, five kilometers there and back. And I went to go get changed and literally my socks were soaking wet from the workout. Like it was like everything, my shirt, my shorts, all of it drenched. It was, uh, it was a good one. So I'll, I'll get. No, no, I know I should charge for that. <laughs> that's free that's on the house that's on the house <laughs> okay cool so let's talk so you've been doing this for a really long time uh we met back in 2014 when i kind of started uh back on to my fitness journey game myself back into shape and we kind of connected and you know we've been you know stayed in close contact ever since obviously which has been great uh, and i love it um but i want to get into a bit of the background about you because i know uh Fortunately or unfortunately, in which way you want to look at it, uh, you and my wife went to school together. So I got a little bit of extra dirt on you from back in your high school days. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> well, that's that, that's a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you were, I've always been like a love for fitness and uh, and working out and exercise. And, you know, from your high school days, you took you off into Western and you went and got a degree in uh, kinesiology. So just kind of give me, give a bit of background to that. Yeah. I mean, I've been a gym rat from, you know, the get go. I mean, uh, you know, I just, a you know, young kid playing lots of sports, competitive tennis, basketball, everything, you know, I was highly involved with a lot of things. I was getting kicked out of the YMCA gym at the age of 12 because I wasn't old enough to be in there trying to lift weights. Um, you know, and then uh, as I got through school and sorted everything out, um, I wanted to, I knew I wanted to be, I actually thought I wanted to go to med school. I thought that. Um, but then, uh, you know, school is not for everybody. I have like entrepreneur, entrepreneurial blood. And so, you know, going into kinesiology was where I ended up. Now to go back a little bit, um, I started off actually taking philosophy as a major and I was in Montreal doing that. And, um, I realized right away that that was not, I don't know how I ended up there. <laughs> I was trying to figure out, I really thought I was going to work for a sports team. I had even sent tons of letters to every major league baseball team. I actually received all these letters back. It was kind of like, I thought I was going to go in that direction. And then all of a sudden I ended up in philosophy. And so, uh, that was a short lived scenario situation. And I flipped over to Western for a kin program for three years. And, uh, while I was there, you know, doing my kin program, I was helping the athletes. I was even had an opportunity to play football, but I turned that down. Um, I just, it was in my last year and it, to me, it almost not sure. I kind of regret it, um, that I didn't give it a go, but I was working with the athletes. I was working with friends. They were paying me like 20 bucks to work out. And right. And so then come back to the summertime after school, I would start off working in some very boutique style personal training studios. And back then it was not something that was common. It was not a trend. Train studios did not really exist. This was actually a little place. So credit to the guys that helped me start it off. They were a little studio in Yorkville and I was bouncing back and forth from Bally's, which was on Bloor. And I was working there and I was still doing the kin program. And so by the time I was all said and done after three years, I didn't want to stay in school any longer. I wanted to get working. Um, even though my, my med school dream, that was, that was over a long time ago before that. Right. Um, I didn't want to do an honors. I didn't see the point, to be honest. Uh, I just wanted to get at work. And that's when I started opening up uh, my own business, training people, flying around the city, hotels, houses. You name it. I've trained there before. I've trained somebody everywhere, any living room. Um, <laughs> you know, you know. You walk into any room. I didn't. It didn't matter what it was. We were going to get a session in, 
And then right. I started opening up my own studios, little studios here and there, and then opened up one gym as a studio. And that went from a thousand square feet to 10,000 square feet and had that gym for 16 years, had a little place, the COVID hits, and now I'm operating right. my own business uh, happily from home. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's all a uh, lot of, lot of, a uh, lot of things have happened, but uh, that's my journey the uh the shortest way i can tell you how i got to where i am today right okay and one one of your philosophies and this is actually i did some deep dive in this article from huff post uh back in 2014 and you it was about seven things that people do and then you had seven key points which was uh and we'll go over them real quickly but it was walk to school no bread in the basket. Uh, we always ask if we can walk there. Uh, we don't fall off uh, the wagon, which I thought was a really interesting one. And I'm going to dive into that one in one second. Um, take the first parking spot, which I was cracking up when I saw that one because I have a friend of mine, one of my best friends, uh, we've been for a gazillion years back in Vancouver. And she always takes the first parking spot because she's scared she's not going to find another spot. She's not because she wants yeah, to walk. That's a good she's, reason to. She's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, always take the stairs over an elevator rather than even if it's one flight or up to nine flights uh, of stairs. And then the last one was eat breakfast 30 minutes uh, right after you wake up. So, um, which was interesting when I saw this, because then I found there was this article in Men's Health Magazine, uh, article by a guy named um, uh, sorry, Michael Easter, uh, who wrote a book called Take the Stairs. And we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago. And I thought the two of them were just an interesting correlation because he was also saying that people just won't do the extra little bit to stay healthy. In fact, like, you know, if people had the choice, only 2% out of a survey on Americans will take the stairs over taking the escalator, which is really sad when you think about it. So let's kind of go through these seven things, I think, because they're all really interesting about health and fitness. And um, like I said earlier, you have transformed my life from when we met seven years ago to where I've gotten to today. And I owe a, a great debt of gratitude to you for pushing me and making me always go that extra little bit that, you know, most guys probably wouldn't have done. And, um, it's been well, thank an you, amazing. You, you, put, you, you put in all the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so you know, I, but you kicked me in the student, derriere, which, which yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, okay. So let's hit them first. Okay. Walk to school. Oh yeah, this one drives me up the wall, and it's funny you bring that up because just yesterday I was uh, my younger daughter and I. She's always like, "I'm like, let's walk." She's like, "Oh, it's so far." Well, yesterday I picked her up somewhere. And I saw her and her friend walking down. I said, "Where were you guys?" She's like, "Oh, we were up there at Starbucks." I'm like, "Every time I tell you to walk somewhere, you tell me it's far. But when you're with your friends, it's not that far." And I said <laughs> to her, "You know, I used to have to drag you to walk you to school. It was such like a a thing. But then once we started walking." It was like you always had better energy. And by the time you got to school, your head was clear and you're ready for school. And also just in general, like it's great for kids to get their energy going, their blood flowing, their endorphins going. You got to get the body moving. You go from bed to car to school, you know, you're probably just going to sit there in a daze until you're uh, ready to go and, and wake up. But I find that walking to school thing just so important. It also goes for house like you walk to work like that also led into the fact that we saw i, I used to run to work every day it didn't matter right. what day it was month it was uh some were obviously better than others but and often people would see me and they'd be like do you want to lift and i was like no no i'm good i'm actually <laughs> i'm purposely running to work and you see me every day <laughs> you drive by right. me every day at 5 45 in the morning you see me running i'm good so i think it's really important if you can uh, especially walk these kids to school. I know that a lot of kids don't go to school maybe so close to their homes, but I don't know. There's a, definitely a range there that you can choose. I'm not going to tell somebody, Hey, like you have a kilometer from school, you have to walk there. But right. I think there's a range there. I think like if you're within two kilometers, it's a no brainer. It's just my opinion, but uh, well, you, I think it's a great but, way to kickstart the day. Yeah, but you'd also kind of kill two birds with one stone, stone, so to speak, because one, you get the bit of uh, the juices flowing, get the you know energy going and the body moving on one part of it. But the other part of it, too, is a bonding moment that you get to have with your child. 
right? Because you get to have a oh, conversation yeah. while, yeah, you're, while you're walking to school. So it's kind of like a... Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I cherish that. That was like yeah. the, the, the greatest part about it. And then I'd always be like, I'm walking you to school. Don't forget, I got to walk home now, right? Or I gotta go back yeah. <laughs> You're going to get picked up probably at the end of the day. Right. So right. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I think that's so, a really okay. great, important way to start the day. All right. So I know bread in the basket, which um, I love this one, but e- explain. Yeah. I mean, you just can't have that bread. Um, it's so hard to, uh, you know, I'm not going to make devil, uh, the bread, the devil, but for a lot of people, they don't realize, uh, the fuel they got to burn when they're eating that bread. And, and so no bread in the basket, like, you know, you sit down at a table and the waiter asks you, do you want bread? It's not even an option. You, you know, you shouldn't, if you're looking to lose weight, I, I don't think, um, having any bread in the basket is a good idea. Um, and so it's a very fine line with carbs and bread. I'm not against them. I just think a lot of times people, I just had someone in this week say to me, actually, oh, it's so, yeah, it's so easy not to eat bread. Like you don't really need it. I'm like, no, you don't really need bread. And people are always like, oh, I need that toast or I need to have a sandwich. There's so many creative ways to get around bread. Now I am a runner. I do run a lot. I do burn a lot of calories. I do carb load. I do eat bread like probably once a week or so. Um, and it goes back to a story where I met a guy and he was telling me how he ran a hundred miles a week. And I was like talking to him about running. I said, what do you eat? He says, whatever I want. Makes sense. But for people <laughs> that they don't realize, they don't realize how many calories and carbs and the equation is just not fair. You know, the input versus what it takes to output that energy, um, to burn off that bread is just not, um, it's not a fair equation. All the power right. to you want to eat your bread but you got to figure out how to burn that fuel. Otherwise that bread and the sugars are going to turn the fat. Right. No, nope, so sure. uh, no bread in the basket, make your life simple. When you get to a restaurant, no, thank you. It's just an automatic. No, thank you. Don't stack your house with bread. Um, right. And maybe go to, you need one bread once a week. You go get a fresh loaf. What I do for my girls, maybe on the weekend. And, um, be careful. Be careful with bread. I, this is a bit of this is a bit of a you know things have changed a little bit um, since I wrote that was in that article. Uh, but I think it's you know you be very careful. Back then there wasn't all this like fancy bread where people are like oh I'll eat this bread. It's got like you know it's gluten free. Oh gluten free, gluten free, gluten free. You can eat it. You can eat it. You can eat it. It's like, <laughs> just because it's gluten free doesn't mean anything. It it's, mean it's, it's, it's a it's, it's a keto uh, bread. It's it's keto bread. Yeah, it, it's yeah. calories. It's calories, yeah, high yeah. calories, calories that are going to take a long time for you to burn. So therefore, you better have a good plan on how you're going to burn these calories. And, you know, you're not going to be, you know, sitting at your desk all day after yeah. having your avocado and toast in the morning. Right. You got to work. The avocado part. Yeah, right. The avocado part is great, but it's like the toast is not the good part of the avocado toast, right? So... Yeah, unless you have a workout yeah. or a, uh, a training program where you need these calories, and it's important to have carbs, need these calories to burn. But for people that are having a struggle losing weight and you know that kind of thing, it's just it's an easy one to just push away for a while. You don't need it. Right. No, for sure. I I I, I go by that philosophy as well. I mean, I try and avoid bread at all costs. So I just don't think it's it's a filler that you don't need. Like it's just there's other things yeah. you can have that will you know, a quinoa or something, um, you know, some great, like, we'll just substitute for what the bread can offer for you. Right. So, yeah. um, okay. So we always ask, can we walk there? So I think that kind of ties a little bit back in about walking to school, but in what you're saying about with your daughter walking to Starbucks and no problem with her friends. So the question is like, you know, if we're going somewhere, I guess is, can we just walk rather than take the car? Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, it's, you know I'm, I'm also very environmentally friendly and, um, I think, you know, people are just, there's, you know, you always use New York as an example, actually. And I, again, I just used it the other day. It seems like a lot of this is popping back up this week, but, um, <laughs> I was like in New York, you know, someone talks about watch walking 10 blocks, like it's around the corner. Right. Whereas right. a lot of times in cities like Toronto living in certain parts of the city, people think that like going from Avenue road to young street is so far. Oh, I got to drive. 
No. It's it's not that far. I don't know how many blocks it is, but it's definitely less than 10. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's always a good idea, both physically um, and for the environment to, to see if you can walk there first. Uh, you know, often, especially going to the gym, like if you live close to your gym, you're going to exercise. If you can, oh, people always have the excuse, well, I got to go somewhere after. I got to go somewhere after. Well, that's fair. <laughs> right? That's fair. Right. And if that's the case, that's the case. But a lot of times people are going home to shower and stuff like that. But I think it's a good thing to ask yourself. Um, and sometimes it's a straight up, no, I can't, can't right. walk there. It's not, I don't have time. But I think it's something good for people to ask themselves. And I think they'll get a lot more physical activity, which then, you know, steps. Everyone's counting their steps now more than ever. And so I think that's a great way to add some simple activity to your life. Yeah, no, I mean, like, even like, you know, you know, like I always try and ride my bike to you to come when I come see you uh, for the workouts and for our training sessions. And it's just like the ride down and especially the ride home are, they're just great because like it kind of gets you warmed up from when you get there. And then it kind of helps kind of flush what you just did out on the way back home again. So and you kind of get a little bit of fresh air at the same time and, you know, get to enjoy the scenery. And it's, you know, it's, it's actually not that much different in time wise between driving and riding the bike because of the, because of all the traffic that goes up and down the streets. Right. So it's kind of like a win-win yeah. from that person for, for sure. Um, oh, yeah, okay. I'd even, yeah. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just happy even like jokingly race people home where I'm yeah. like, okay, you drive. <laughs> I'm going to bike or maybe I'm going to run and I'm probably going to beat you because we're only talking about a mile or two or kilometers, you know, two to four kilometers or something like that. You're going to have red lights. You're going to have this, you're going to have that. You're going to burn fuel. You're going to do this. You're going to be frustrated with the driver in front of you. And I'm just going to cruise home peacefully. So I think there's a lot of benefits to that. No, 100%. Okay, we don't fall off the wagon, which I love this one. So uh, I kind of know where you're going with this, but uh, take it away. Yeah, I think just um, it's a lifestyle. It's like you live, you know, you don't, you don't get on and get off. It's you're always on, right? Like you're always on track. You're always on. Like it's part of your life. No, no, no pun, no pun yeah, intended. No pun intended. But like, yeah. you know, you got there's gonna be a day where you, unfortunately you're probably not gonna have the option to uh, move your body the way you once did. So I think. You know, now it's like part of your, you know, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time. You have time. And we've all everyone's seen them, different charts and how you have time and 24 hours in a day. You have time to exercise and you, you don't decide to, um, oh, I'm only going to work out in the summer. I don't work out in the winters or I don't work out on vacation or, you know, this kind of, it's just, you're on and off, you're on and off. And then you get out of rhythm. Once you're out of rhythm, it's much harder to get back into it so getting back on the wagon right it's like you're always on you're on for the yeah. ride it's like you don't get off it's part you make it a yeah. priority and there's no sense to me to say to yourself oh i'm off the wagon even if you're having a bad day and you miss a workout you're not off the wagon right you, you don't right. maybe you just decided that this weekend you're gonna have a bender and you're gonna go to a cottage and you're gonna drink and you're gonna eat and you're gonna do this you're not falling off the wagon Cause you have a plan that, you know, Monday, Tuesday, you're back working out. You're not back on the wagon. You're not right. off the wagon. Not the only, it's such a negative, you know, a lot of negative uh, energy around falling off the wagon or eating bad meals and just kind of use that as a positive. Like you had control, you made the choice. I want to eat poorly this weekend. No problem. No problem. I'm not off the wagon. I'm, no problem. I decided to do this. So now I know I got to work out again. Otherwise I'm going to get right. really out of shape and unhealthy. No. Nope. Right. It's funny, you, you know, you so, talk about not working out on, on vacations and, you know, those kinds of things. And I actually find, I actually like working out on vacations more than I do because it's just like you get to be, in, you're in a new environment. So different equipments, you got to sometimes have to readapt and figure out how to do different things because you might not have the things that you're always used to using back at home. Um, plus, you know, if you're like, you know, if you're a runner, you know, you get to go, you can run, you can get to get new scenery in, which is always really cool and a way to explore. Um, so like I said, like, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, like, you know, you, you need to take that time off here and there for sure. 100%, uh, like a day here or a day there, just kind of let your body have a chance to recoup. Um, and also just even to shock the system, right. Kind of like a reboot of the computer. 
So, you know, you, t- you take a day off, you go on that little weekend bender, it kind of like shocks the system. Monday, you pick it back up again and, you know, you're flying away and you're off to the races. But the thing I always say is that, you know, schedule it, right? Like, you know, if you know that you need to get your workout in, put it in your calendar, make it a priority, make it an appointment. And that appointment you have to stick to just like you would anything else uh, in your calendar, right? So whether it would be like a doctor's appointment, uh, a meeting for work or whatever it is, it's, it's just, it's a set appointment that you don't deviate off of. Yeah. And there's uh, I got to credit David Goggins. He was, uh, he's a Navy SEAL for those who don't know him. And, uh, you know, I steal his quote from the other day is like, you don't negotiate with yourself. There's no negotiation. Yeah. You're working out, you exercise. Yep. Once you give yourself this out, you're, you're already negotiating, but there's nothing to negotiate. You need, you, you, it's important to exercise. It's, it needs to be important. If not, then don't complain. Don't complain that your ankles hurt. Don't complain that your back is sore. Don't complain. No complaining. You're not taking care of yourself. So, um, I, yeah, it's uh, just, yeah. S- Make it, you get up every morning. I keep seeing this thing on social media about like, if I gave you a million dollars, would you be happy? And then the whole thing falls into the fact that, okay, but you don't get to wake up. Okay. So does that million dollars still make you happy? No. Right. So therefore getting up is the, you know, get up every day is the win, you know, so be happy and take advantage of your health. No, for sure. And, you know, I, I, we'll get into all the benefits in, in a second. I just want to get through the rest of this list. But um, obviously taking the first parking spot is pretty straightforward. It's like, you know, they you take the first spot you see, then you can walk to get to where you need to get to, uh, get a little extra, you know, energy going rather than just try and look for the spot, like literally two feet away from the front door, is what it comes down to. Yeah. 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 Just a little just a waste of time yeah. you just get your catch your spot and walk mm-hmm. in you're also talking about like how big are parking lots yeah yorkdale parking lot's massive but like at the end of the day how yeah. big is that parking lot even like even if you had the worst spot like how long is it going to actually take you to walk from the end of the parking lot to the door not very long yeah. right no yeah we all no. like a good spot everyone it's a win when you get that first spot it's like uh, even me i'm like yes you know like i'm so close to the door this is awesome but the stress out about it is it's like you're driving yourself up the wall over something that's like enjoy it might not be so yeah. much fun minus 10 minus 20 in toronto in the middle of winter but at the same time i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you burn more okay. calories when you're trying to stay warm so park far there you go okay um take the stairs uh even if you have to go up one flight or up to nine flights rather than take the elevator uh again I mean, you know, pretty ties in back to that article uh, that I mentioned earlier from Men's Health Magazine. And, you know, saying that people will always take the easy, you know, going through a mall or going into an um, uh, office building or whatever, you know, um, or condo building, you know, like, why not take the stairs? Like, you know, if you're, especially if you're not going up that far. Well, I know it's been a long time that we've all been consistently traveling, but, uh, you know, you ever go to the airport? Yes, you have a suitcase. Yes, but if you have a carry-on or something, like there's nobody on the stairs in airports. Nobody, yeah. right? And yeah. there's a lot of people that are just traveling for the day, and there's a lot of people with carry-ons and stuff like that. My kid always like, oh man, like they're always ready for me to take the stairs. They just know I'm going to take the stairs. Now, um, I think it was I don't know when was I last the Island Airport. They redid the Island Airport, and there are the craziest set of stairs under that tunnel. And someone was saying, you know, you just wait, just wait till we get to the stairs. I don't know if you've traveled in the island airport in the last no. couple of years or a year. No. Anyway, there are these stairs at the island airport that when you go through the tunnel, that <laughs> it is actually a serious workout. Like right. it's, it's, it's too bad that you can't just go there and work out and run up and down these steps because it is like, like this. I don't know. I don't know whoever, whoever designed that they must've made a mistake because they didn't for the average person to walk those stairs it's not happening <laughs> so they have to take because i love it right okay and then last one was eat breakfast 30 minutes after you wake up now that one i'm more curious to know why 30 minutes as opposed to 10 minutes 15 minutes an hour well you know like this is like science is you know this is an older article and we've learned so much over the last 
several years even about eating and when to, you know, there's so much intermittent fasting and there's, you know, really um, it's important. Like if you're going to go exercise and the answer is no, you're not going to probably have a big meal 30 minutes after waking up. Um, But the idea there back then was to have enough energy to, you know, power up your brain and to power up your body to function well for the day. So this one's a tough one to kind of like break down because it all depends on the person. I've done it all. I've, I've eaten right when I've gotten up. I've intermittent fasted for long periods of time. I've experienced what it, you know, every athlete, everybody has their different schedule. There's not a right answer to this question. Um, it's all a matter of what works best for you. Now, what people need to understand is that if you've had a big meal the night before, and you've only gotten like five or six hours of sleep, you probably don't need to eat right away in the morning to function right. properly. But if you ate at eight o'clock last night and you're going to work and it's 8 a.m., that's 12 hours. That's, right. you know, that's a long time. And then you're what you're going to go, when are you going to eat? So by the time you actually had something to eat, you're talking. 12 and a half, 13 hours and intermittent fasting is really anywhere between 12 and 16 hours. So, you know, a lot of people need to take into consideration when they had their last meal and, you know, really feel it out. What's best for their rhythm. A lot of people uh, ask me, what should I eat before I can work out? Well, it depends on what works for you. Some people run a marathon, they eat a bagel right before me. I have to have whatever I'm having like two to three hours before I run a marathon. So this one is a very like, everyone has to really figure it out on their on their own and try different things but just to remember that you probably fueled up the night before if you ate late and you're getting up at five or six a.m um you probably don't need to eat right away Um, right so really important for people to figure it out i think uh, what works best for them no, for sure. Um, so I want to get back onto the intermittent fasting because um, I think there's a lot of mixed um, theories, practices on those. Because if you're someone who works out relatively regular, like I said, say five days a week, six days a week, and you train relatively hard, um, can you do that with intermittent fasting? Is that not going to be more? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Do more damage than good? Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, and the science is there. The science, it works. It's, it's, it's a, it's a scientific of all these things out there. It's very scientific and it, and it really makes, it does make sense because you are going to burn fat as your first source of fuel. If you haven't already taken in more fuel, um, right when you got up. So it definitely makes a lot of sense. Now, could you be a power lifter? Uh, I don't think you're going to find too many power lifters who are working out in the morning that are going to intermittent fast. Um, can you really physically work out hard uh, at nine in the morning after not having anything to eat because you ate the night before? Yeah, absolutely. You could. So um, it all, it's all a matter of like in that window of intermittent fasting, when you're allowed, when you do have that window of eating that you're fueling your body properly. So if you're only eating between 12 and 6 PM or 12 and 8 PM, as long as you're really eating well and you're storing up the right amount of fuel, the right amount of carbs and proteins and fats, then you really shouldn't have a problem. Right. And it's a, it's a really, it's a a mental state too. Like you'll get up and intermittent fasting is really easy too. If you've, you know, like a lot of people can learn to not eat in the morning after they've had a real bender the night before, you know, they might go, you know, everyone's got to go for brunch the next day after they've had a big night out. Well, you you still got to burn off what you ate the night before. And now you're having brunch. Like, you know, right. it's not going to help with your weight loss program. So, again, intermittent fasting, there's different levels of it. And I definitely think it works for some. And uh, it's definitely backed by a lot of great science. And it's 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 not a bad thing for you. Um, but for some people, it's just not going to work because they just, they want to be satisfied with something in the morning and they got to go to work and, and they're going to be thinking the thing about intermittent fasting. That's a bit of sometimes it gets the people is that you're thinking about food. You're like, okay, one more hour to go one right, more, hour, right. 30 minutes to go. And if you're doing that, just close your window a little bit on your intermittent fasting. You'll still get some benefits out of it. 
is you have to allow for your body to burn, right? Like you can't just eat dinner, have a late night snack, get up, have breakfast. Like the, then there's no burn rate. There's no, there's no right. way for your body to start burning. Now, if you're that guy I was telling you who was running a hundred miles a week, well, yeah, he's probably <laughs> already ran 10 miles before his next meal. So it's like, right. that makes sense. You got to eat, you know, for the kind of person you are and the kind of activity level you produce. Uh, okay, you can't but really so worry you, about what other people do, right? It's like, you yeah. got to figure it out on your own. Like, it's just like any athlete. Uh, they figure out what works best for them before the big game, before they run a marathon, before they, it's not, they're not walk, looking down the, you know, in the locker room and saying, eating the same thing that the other guy ate because it's, it's not going to be good for them. Right. So okay, it's important so, that everyone tests. Right. Okay. So, but it, so if I go intermittent fasting, so then is it better to do it? After, start like the fast like say after you've worked out and had like uh, something to fuel you back from the workout and then go for the fast for the next like 12 hours after that point or yeah well the fast yeah. will take place after dinner oh after di- oh so, so you did after dinner. yeah it takes place after dinner so oh, okay you stop eat you stop eating either six or it, whatever you're scheduling if you're if you're a uh you know, shift worker and, you know, you know, you got a different lifestyle. You can't, you, the hours of the day are different for everybody, but you're looking for that 12 to 16 hour window of uh, letting your body not take in any more food. You can have no calories. You can have like coffee and water and stuff like that, but that's going to turn your body into the ability to burn more fat and use it as fuel. Right. And, and totally be fine. Cause you've, you know, but you don't, you wouldn't get up and not eat for 12 hours, like from eight to eight. That would be like, that's more of like a religious fast <laughs> of some sort. But the rhythm of intermittent fasting takes place during your sleep. Right, right. Okay. In, your brain. Night, night sleep. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, all right. One of your famous slogans or sayings was always think naked. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. I did some research. Yeah. 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 <laughs> still like that one. yeah. Yeah. Well, you still have the shirts. You still wear them today. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I love uh, that program. That was a program I designed and the name. And we were even going to do some like, we were going to do a whole like line of food products and uh, we went to New York and all this. We did a whole bunch of studies with it. And the concept is basically as simple as this everyone has that think naked moment. Um, and I, and go deeper into it after, but that think naked moment is to me and to, is when you, everyone gets out of the shower and they're by themselves, not always, but they're, (laughs) you know, get out of the shower. And then (laughs) there's that moment where it's you in the mirror, right? And you have that moment. It's, you see yourself in the mirror. It's. There's nothing, there's no filters, right? It's right. just you in the mirror. And that's the think naked moment. That's the moment where you're either really happy with your body or appearance or you're not. Um, or you're in the middle ground and you're like, yeah, there I am again today, right? I'm happy, right. status quo, I'm great. So the think naked kind of, it all started from that moment. Um, and then it kind of went into, um, you know, think naked when you're, about to maybe eat something bad you know think about how you're gonna look naked right (laughs) and that changes the way people you know a lot of people get uncomfortable even if they're at a pool party or something and they don't have to be but you know if you can think that way um and it's for yourself too like you it's all about you it's not what other people think of you but we all like to feel good and there's nothing wrong with being concerned about how you look and how your body is there's nothing wrong with that like right you know, fat shaming this and fat shaming that you know you could save people's lives by telling them i, I saw this whole thing an interesting concept like this there's any see stories about it like something like you know what that guy kept on calling me fat and you know what it saved my life because i was right right and that's not healthy being being overweight is not a healthy thing so no, you don't want to make someone feel badly, but you want to also want to help them out. And even for that own person to look in the mirror and say, you know what, this think naked moment, 
it's not doing it for me right now. I gotta, I gotta get to the gym a little more often, and maybe not eat all that bread. Um, <laughs> but the thing making program it was a whole program. It was like it consisted of uh, half hour workouts um, every day for five days a week, and right. I had an eating program. And it was about the consistency of eating well and exercising for a short amount of time. And then it was all a matter of think naked, think naked, think naked. And then all of a sudden it starts triggering your brain. Oh yeah, you know, like I gotta think naked all the time. Because right. we all like to be naked at some point, right? Why not no, feel good about sure. it when you are, right? Well, I mean, that was my big aha moment was, you know, uh, you know the story, and I'll just kind of reiterate to people who don't know it from before, but uh it was December 2013 and we were in uh, Cabo San Lucas and I took a picture with my wife and I was standing sideways and we had just had our third child. She was about just over a year old. And I look I, now that I was like seven months pregnant and I was like, what just happened? And I, like I, it snuck up, up on me so quickly and I just didn't even realize it. And, you know, to give you some context, so like I, Literally, my thing was I would go in the afternoon. You know, my office was up the street from Starbucks. I'd walk down, get like a regular latte and one of those giant chocolate oh, yeah. chip cookies, right? From Starbucks, which oh, yeah. are so good. Um, and that's like my go to treat uh, and have like a latte and a cookie in the afternoon. But you just don't realize the damage that, that does to you over the course of time. And my wife had done a phenomenal job getting back into shape after our daughter was born and she was going to your gym. And she told me, she's like, Mark, just go get down there. You'll love it. You don't have to think about it, literally. Um, and it will get you going to where you want to get to. And that was my aha moment about, you know, thinking naked, so to speak. And, you know, here we are seven years later and I'm in the best shape of my life and down 70 some odd pounds from where I was when wow. I started. So, you know, uh, That's yeah, a big, it's, a, it's a whole other life. Yeah, no, it's a whole, I was carrying a whole extra person that I didn't know I had with me. It was like having a child strapped to my back that I didn't know it was there. But, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. but the, the point I want to make about this is that I think this is so important is that you got one shot at this life to make the most of it and do the best you can. And, you know, your likelihood of living it longer, living it better and living a more fuller life. If you do some form of exercise on a regular basis, just increases those odds that much more. And I know we all live these crazy lifestyles. And I think we, um, you know, we're all on the go running around, especially if you have kids and taking them here and there, all the activities, everything they got to do, but you got to carve up that little bit of time for yourself every day to give yourself a little bit of that exercise benefit Otherwise, you're going to miss the boat on, you know, so many other things. And, you know, again, I'm going to go back to that article, like it was in Men's Health, you know, by, um, by Michael Easter. And it was just saying, like, this is a guy, and we talked about this, I think, a couple of weeks ago when I read it, was that he went and did a, a month-long trip in a backpacking in Alaska. And just living off the land and, and um, backpacking and hiking and moving and constantly having to do all these things, even like going to get fresh water and taking the fresh water that he got in the jugs and then carrying back to the campsite. He came back after a month of doing that in the best shape of his life. So, oh, yeah. um, you, you know, so I look at it kind of go, I think it's such an important message and I'm, you know, like, I, like I'm the converted, like, you know, I came from a big sports background. I did a lot of sports growing up as a kid. I played competitive baseball, hockey, football, all that stuff. Um, but you know, I let life get in the way. And that's the one thing that we can't do is let life get in the way. And that's why I think it's so important to have someone like yourself, uh, to be able to advocate and talk about this, uh, and give advice on this because, you know, if you're just looking and you're struggling and you're kind of not sure where to go and you want to get started, what, what would be the advice that you would give to someone who's just looking kind of literally no pun intended to get on track? Um, <laughs> I mean, commit, commit to, you know, uh, commit to, to, uh, to yourself to take better care of yourself. Um, and, and, you know, well, you know, you just gotta uh, get out of bed, put that foot down, and go. You cannot negotiate it. It's, it's almost not an option. Um, right. Don't give yourself the out. 
Start with a, a very simple plan. Don't, you know, every set a goal, you know, there's some basic like things here that you, you, you know, have not gone away in all my years uh, in, in the world of fitness long before me, um, you know, make a goal. It's very, it's like simple goal. I'm going to work out twice this week. Okay. Once, yeah, you know, I'm going to set your goals a little higher. Yeah, you're like, I say, let's go, we're going to work out twice a week. Okay. And it could be for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it's going to be. You just have to get started and then you'll get the bug. It's like, right. um, I was comparing someone saying to me, like, how do you run? Running's crazy. It's like, it's this drug. It's like when you get back from your run, you just want to go do it yeah. again. But during it, it's it's not that much fun all the time. I have to enjoy it, enjoy it. But it's like golf too. It's like there's so many people that golf and they're like, why do I come back here? Why? Because you had that one good shot. Good it shot. Yeah. So good. <laughs> and the endorphins. Totally. Yeah. And the endorphins are flying and you feel good. Life. So basically what I say is life is just better fit. It just is. Like you get more out of life. Yeah. When you're fit and that doesn't mean that your fitness level is comparing to somebody else, but you as a person being more fit than you once were, it's just better. You know, it's just a better life. It's a better opportunity. You feel better. Some, I have one client that always says to me, good things happen to me when I'm working out. And yeah. I think there's a correlation there where just his energy is probably better. And, you know, he's, he's killing it at work and he's, you know, maybe getting a few more dates and whatever it is, but everything just falls into place for him, brings it up all the time. Um, and well, so I, I, I think it's like, that's you why know, you just said about, yeah, it, well, sorry to interrupt, but you were just saying about the endorphins, right? Like, uh, but that's the mm -hmm. thing is like, you know, endorphins do what they make you happy. Right. So, happy. right. So when you're exercising and you're, you're getting all that stuff flowing, you, you just, you're creating those endorphins and it's making you feel happy and feel good and feel confident about yourself. And, um, you know, like, I know, like, just you know, like, you like the way your clothes fit better. Uh, the way you carry yourself makes a big difference. Uh, the way you think makes a difference, the way you act and the way you can manage through your time through the course of the day, because you're not getting into those afternoon lulls because now you're probably sleeping better as well. Uh, because yeah. your body is just moving that much more and you're creating that much more energy for yourself. Uh, and that's why I just think it's like, it's such you know, an important message. And I think with COVID, it's one thing that's, you know, it's talking is that you can't let things take you down. You still got to maintain your lifestyle. And because we're probably home a bit more and we're not traveling as much as we used to be, um, that that's even more reason why you got to make sure that you're staying on track. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> You know, it's a, such a stress, you know, great way to burn off and keep yourself from getting too low. Um, when my kids were little, you know, I'm, I'm divorced and there was a time when my kids were little and I was divorced and I would have them on my weekend with them and I was not, not going to work out. And yes, I had the gym and I'm like that. So I always used to say to them, guys, a sweaty dad is a happy dad. So you got to <laughs> just be like, <laughs> give me 30. Like, and for a guy who goes running for, you know, two hours when I can, I was looking just to squeeze in a half an hour. That's all I wanted. I was like, guys, right. I had a roar in my living room. I had the gym. I sometimes you get them and we go to the gym and they'd run around the gym and I would just be pumping something out for a half an hour. Just let me just go. Right. Half an hour. And then the rest of the day, I was like, you guys want to throw things in the car and you want to do this, go right ahead. But if I had not gotten that workout in and my, body and my mind wasn't feeling better who knows i would have gotten mad at them i would have yelled at them i would have been frustrated right. that's not to say you didn't still get mad at your kids or get mad at them but but that exercise you know for all the parents out there you know you get a workout in you're probably going to be able to deal with your kids a little easier in my opinion oh i agree no, no matter how old they are little to big yeah. For yeah. sure. Well, it's funny because my, my daughter, who's now 10, she always laughs at me. She says, Dad, you eat too much protein. Stop eating all the protein all the time. I'm like, but my, it's what keeps me healthy and keeps me going and makes me strong and fit. She's like, it's still too much. I'm like, okay, you're 10, whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but for the boys, like I have uh, three kids, I have two boys. So the boys both play competitive hockey. But the difference is now they see, you know, both my wife and I, we both are very actively hardcore into working out and taking care of ourselves and exercising. Um, we set the example, right? So leadership by example, um, you know, like 
it just makes that much more. I think of a difference when, you know, your kids at home see how well mom and dad do to take care of themselves. Cause it like, you know, look, you know, we're similar ages. I'm, I'm, I'm much older than you are, but you know, like you just think about, uh, <laughs> our, uh, our catch parents, up. you catch it up. Uh, but our, you know, our parents where they were, uh, at our ages now compared to we were, we are today is like, completely different i mean it's like not even remotely close to being the same no it's uh the, the, the times have changed and i think that's a good thing you know i work out with my daughter all the time my older daughter my younger one she uh she's yeah, she's more than welcome to work out with me but it's not her right. thing she's more of a gymnast but uh she works out in a different way but yeah i know it's a great way you know to and, and it, times have changed you know we're much younger um than we once were like age yeah. i you know it is literally just a number and you can't worry about it and don't let yourself down because you're getting older you, there's i know so many people at ages like that motivate me whether they're a decade or two older than me and i'm like okay if that guy is like 10 15 years older than me, he's deadlifting 200 pounds or something like okay i have no right. excuse right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. uh you know, it's in pain. Yeah, they'll, people are like, oh, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I can't do it. Like, yeah, that's. I hear guys in their 30s who train with me go, oh, I'm getting old. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know. It's just something right. that comes out of people's mouth. Like, you're not yeah. that old. Enough. Drop it. Stay yeah. Exercise. Well, I mean, I, I, I joke about it all the time, but only because I, I just turned 51. But I mean, yeah. you know, um, but it doesn't matter. But you I mean, don't stop working out. You don't stop working no. out. You're like, no, I'm no. going to work out more now. More. I want to yeah, work out more I got- now. I'm. You're working more now than you were when you sounds like when you were 30, right? So totally, totally. Right. So, so and, and and again, you, you go back to that age thing, and I'll give you just a great example. And I know we're getting short on time here, so we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. But um, a buddy of mine who's hardcore into CrossFit, who's a year than I am, just turned 50. So he qualified for the CrossFit Games at 50 years old for his age category, came in first place for qualifications out of 7,800 people worldwide. Right. Yeah, and just from putting, yeah. yeah, just from putting the work and the effort in. So, I mean, like, yeah. it doesn't matter whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, it doesn't just as long as you're, the point is just do something like just do some form of something that can keep you healthy because you're just going to live a much better life by doing that. And that's the important part of it. I think and then that's the message that I think is so important to get across to the people who are listening to this and people who are watching this. Um, and, um, go from there. Right. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You don't need fancy, anything fancy. Just yeah. drop down do some pushups if you're in doubt. There you go. What's next for you? What's, what's next on the horizon? What's the, what do you got in the pipeline? Um, well, I could, I know you. there's an app. I know there's an app cruising around there. Yeah, there's some app work. Uh, I've got a few things that I've, um, that I've got, I'm working on, uh, that I'm not ready to release out yet. <laughs> um, but, uh, I got a couple of things, uh, cooking that over the next several months, uh, should be on the horizon. Uh, I, I don't even, I can't even really go there with it because, um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to get ahead of it. So okay. all right. I'll be back and to talk about all those things, the app and everything more and more, um, there is an app that we're working on. It's called Fit Swoop, and it's being mainly um, in the U.S. right now. It's a competitor to ClassPass. It's a much better option for gym owners and and consumers. There's no membership fees. It's a much better model for the fitness industry for right. everybody um, to be able to stay active and get fitness on the go real quick and to put money into the pockets of gym owners. So check it out. It's um, that's uh, one thing that I'm involved with that I definitely could announce that we're talking about. It's mainly happening <laughs> in the U S right now. Right, um, right. But uh, Canada, you know, we just been shut down here longer. So hopefully soon. Cool. Cool. And if anybody is interested in getting involved in personal training, is there, you want to put something out there where they can reach out to you or. Yeah, they can just, um, I, I see all these like big time celebrities giving out their phone number, just like, you know, <laughs> I know it's all of them, <laughs> but, uh, they can just, be, uh, they can just, uh, sure. They can call me. If you're listening to this, you can just call me 416-895-6360. Just don't crank call me too late at night. If that's where you're going to get to it. 
Yeah, perfect. No, no. Our viewers and listeners would never do that because they're respectful of everybody's time. And I'm actually space. happy for you to text me an email because then I'll be right on it. Okay, perfect. So so give Larry, Here's my number. They can text there you me. Go. There you go. Text Larry if you're interested in, in getting involved in some personal training. Larry, thank you so much for your time. I know how important it is for you and uh, for doing this. I really am grateful. Thank you awesome. so much. For, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. All the best. Yeah, thanks, man. This is great. Good luck with all My the pleasure. shows and everything. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, pal. All right. See you, buddy. Bye-bye.